Brian, soybean yields have not kept up with corn yields in terms oh, of the gains on. that they're having out yes, of the field. Yes, they have. They absolutely have. When you look historically at soybean yields in the United States, they're on a line just about equal to what corn is. Percentage-wise, we're seeing gains with soybeans. The genetics on soybeans, I'll tell you, have gotten dramatically better, just like they have on corn. Well, I think our gains on soybeans have been even better than our gains on corn over the last five years. On but, our farm. But you look at many farmers and they say, we're struggling with this problem. And one of the reasons why is they're focusing on fertilizing the corn, exactly what that corn needs and getting to understand, you know, exactly what we need to do to raise the best corn. But many guys, soybeans are a second crop and well, I fertilize the corn pretty heavy. There's gotta be some carryover fertilizer out there my beans can extract. And that's not the way to look at it. Soybeans are a very important crop too and they have a high need for nutrients. You have to fertilize your soybeans separately. So where we want you to start today is by getting the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app for your iPhone or iPad. Download that right now and take a look at what the numbers are. Plug in 50 bushel beans or 60 or in our farm we're trying to fertilize for 80 bushel beans. That's my yield goal on many of our farms for next year and you know what? If we don't feed the crop I know we can't get the yield that we're hoping for. Well if you don't have a smartphone or an iPad you can still go to our website at agphd.com and click on the resources tab and you'll find the chart that we're talking about that'll show you exactly what your soybean crop is going to remove but, from the soil. But this is where we start before we ever, ever even think about fertilizer we think about what we're going to plant for next year anything we look at this very chart and say okay we have now an idea that we're going to plant soybeans in this field our yield goal is 80 what do we really need in terms of fertility all right well here's where we start brand because you look at this chart or you look at the app and you say whoa 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 you say i need all kinds of nitrogen for my soybeans I didn't think I was supposed to put nitrogen on beans. I thought they produced it themselves. Well, they will produce a good share of the nitrogen that they're going to need. The they problem can. is, yeah, you have to have the right bacteria on your root system. Yeah, so what we're talking about here is rhizobia bacteria, and those are naturally found in soils. But where we get really concerned is if you haven't planted soybeans on this ground before, or if you haven't planted soybeans on a regular basis, or if you've had major drought or flooding problems. So let's review real quick. 2011, major flooding. <laughs> Flood. 2012, drought. major drought. Okay, so what are the odds that a lot of those bacteria have survived going into 2013? Probably not real good. So our suggestion is inoculate and maybe put some amount of nitrogen out there. Now, if you're putting a whole bunch of MAP or DAP out there, in addition to the phosphorus, you are getting some nitrogen. So on our farm, in many cases, that's enough. I'm getting 20, 30, maybe 40 pounds of nitrogen out there. If I'm going for 80 bushel beans, between that and having good bacterial activity, I should be fine. Yeah, make sure you're inoculated. That's the key one, and it's very very inexpensive to do that. Then when you look at the phosphorus and potassium needs of your soybeans, they are really high, especially that potassium number. It really shocks a lot of guys. If you're raising 60 bushel soybeans, you're actually removing 48 pounds of phosphate and 84 pounds of K2O potassium when you harvest that grain and take it off the field. Just now, for the grain only removal. So that's not what it takes to raise the crop. That's just grain only removal. So when those 60 bushel beans leave the field, that 84 units of potassium and 48 units of phosphorus that's gone forever. And when we look at raising a 200 bushel corn crop, farmers say, well, I got to feed that corn. That really needs the nutrients. Yeah, 200 bushel corn removes 60 pounds of K2O potassium. So a 60 bushel bean crop removes a almost, lot more. Almost 50% more. Yeah, it's crazy. And I didn't realize this either until just a few years ago. But that's why we want you to look at the chart. If you don't understand what the crop's going to remove, it's hard to know what to fertilize with. Then the other thing this year, coming off a flood year and then a drought year, it's never been more important or more critical to your operation to get good soil samples from your fields. Now, maybe you say, I don't have it in the budget to do every single field. Well, do some of the fields at least and get an idea of what kind of carryover fertilizer you have from last year. Or if you're drastically short in something, find out what it is. Like for us on our farm, we found many of our fields over the years started to be short in potassium. We were doing a great job on the other nutrients, but potassium, we were short. Well, no wonder soybean yields have been lagging because a lot of the potassium in our fields just wasn't available for our crop. So if you're going to look at this potassium level, you've got to look at base saturation and where we want base saturation is in the four to 8% level on potassium. If you're not at that level, you're gonna need more potassium for sure. I'll guarantee you, and I can prove it to you with plant tissue analysis. Your plant absolutely will not get enough potassium in it unless you've got that K range into the four to 8%. And you're not gonna know that unless you have a soil test done and run a base saturation test. 
Okay, I've got three other points, Brian. First of all, micronutrients are very important for soybeans. You need to get them out there, but it's not really safe to put them in furrow for the most part. We need to put them off to the side in oh, a two-by-two two if possible. You can, we or put ours, no, we put ours in furrow. It's just you got to keep the rate relatively low. But it's fortunately, just, you don't need a lot of micronutrients. Quart, quart and a half of a blended micronutrient product, and you're in pretty good shape. It can be a little risky in certain soil types, especially if it's sandy and low organic yes, matter soil. True. So you do have to watch out for that. The other thing, just in general, if you want to put liquid fertilizer, fertilizer in the furrow, you can do that. Again, you just can't get carried away with the rates. In many cases, three gallons if you have a decent three, CEC I'd say in your field. Three, i one or less. No, and it, it no, depends no, on your CEC. No, if you've no. got I, sandy there's no soil way again, I'm putting that much out there. Well, I, I well, feel very comfortable putting three out if I've got a CEC that's close to 20. I won't have much issue with that. I, I wouldn't take that kind of risk. So you can go with Darren and be on the risky well, it depends side. Depends on what you're doing. You know, I'm not be a gambler. A, what the heck? I'm not you know? using a high okay, salt fertilizer. It's not like we have a thousand dollars an acre at risk if we <laughs> well, have right. a bad crop. That's why I'm going to use so, something like a Pro Germinator <laughs> or a Sure K that have extremely low salt content. If I'm going to be in soybeans, because that seed is very, very susceptible to injury from high salt fertilizers. Finally, Brian, my last point: we've got micronutrients. We've got a little bit of fertilizer. We're going to put in furrow. What about foliar apps? For the most part, guys are trying to save a crop that man I got a disaster out there maybe I can throw a little bit of fertilizer it's not going to help you that late in the year you've got to have a good soil program first if you're going to have any success at all from your foliar applications well, the last thing I had Darren was in iron deficiency chlorosis soil so in other words when there's high pH high salt high nitrate in those soils we see a lot of yellow beans and that's where farmers are putting on high doses of products like green bean or soy green so they get more iron out there so even though the soil isn't short on iron it's just not a available in those pH and high salt, high nitrate situations. Our other suggestion for that long term is put some tile in the ground. You'll lower your pH, you'll lower your salt levels, you'll lower your nitrate levels over time. Well, there's certainly a lot of things we've talked about today, but with soybeans, it's important to fertilize that crop. Start by taking a look at the nutrient removal, whether it's on our nutrient removal app or whether it's right on our website, you can find those charts from the USDA on how many nutrients a soybean crop actually takes. Then you can base your fertilizer program on good soil tests, including base saturation and your nutrient removal to find out exactly what yeah, you Yeah, just do. to give you an idea how much this is worth, we picked up a new piece of ground this year that had been cash rented for many years. And right across the road, I'm talking literally right across the road, we fertilized it pretty well for the last 10 years now and it's ground we've had for a long time and we had 15 bushels more soybeans right across the road 15 bushels more that's the difference in fertility that's exactly what we're talking about today and I just cannot stress to you enough if you're trying to raise a great soybean crop you've got to feed the crop in order to get that yield if you want top yields one other thing you need to do is control our weed of the week can you identify this week's weed 